The Lord be with you. And with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, other Elijah, still others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him, he replied, you are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this, he turned around and, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise In the first reading today, book of Genesis, we hear the word covenant. One word covenant, I will establish my covenant with you. And he goes on, and of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. What the word covenant mean? Covenant is not a contract. A contract is limitation. A contract has conditions. Covenant, there's no condition, no limitation. as a blood sealing word and promise. The covenant that God made for us doesn't change. It's the same covenant that did begin and continue to eternity. The contract is totally different. So again, the love of God that he has, and also whatever he did with the flood, he almost eliminate the face of the earth, and then he changed his mind, has pity, and what did, and we know the story of Noah. And we know how Noah went up, God blessed Noah and his sons, and said to them, be fertile, and multiply, and fill the earth. This is our loving God. In this gospel today, there is two words. Who do people say that I am when Jesus asked his disciples? Who do people say that I am? And then he turned around, he said, Who do you say that I am? Two different questions. He wanted to know how people thought about him. He wanted to know from his disciples what they'd heard about him. And he knew he was undermined. He was almost, you know, talking bad about him all the time. Because the way he promised to be and the way he said what he was. But amazing, when we see and he turn around, and of course they say John the Baptist, Elijah, they really they knew how to give him, shall I say, uh, a good reference and not a bad one. Of course, St. John the Baptist, we know all his story, Elijah also, and all these prophets. But amazing, and he turned around and he said, but what do you think that I am? That's a question to you, my dear brothers and sisters, for you and I. What do you think Christ is for you? So Peter, like always, the first one to open his mouth and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amazing that Peter knew that Christ was a supernatural person. Peter knew that Jesus had superpower. Probably he saw some of his miracles. He knew who he was. But he was the only one to recognize that something above the human comprehension, which is God himself. So the question to you and I this morning, who do you say? Who do you think? How do you feel? And who is Christ in your life? 
It's a question today, this morning, for all of us. Who do you say that Christ is in your life? Who is he? Who is he in your life? Who is he? Ponder on that question only. What Jesus is for me? My friend? My God? My buddy? My savior? My doctor? My lawyer? My accountant? My neighbor? Is it Jesus everything for us? And every time we say something or we need something, Jesus, Jesus, isn't it? We always come to Jesus. Therefore, if you think what Jesus is, he's everything for us. Absolutely everything. You do anything and you need help. Jesus. You have a problem with your doctor, with your health, with the lawyer, with your neighbor. You have a problem with anything in your life. You call upon him. Isn't it? So amazing that God, Jesus, is everything for us. At least for me. Amazing that sometimes when we are in pain, I say, Lord, please help me. He's my physician, isn't it? And he's going to help me to see through. Oh, I got a problem with the banking account. He'll be my accountant. In every situation of our lives, we invoke the name of Jesus. It's a name, most powerful name could ever have existed and will continue existing to eternity. Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshua. Actually, he was called by Yeshua on Jesus' time. It was not called Jesus. Jesus was a, was a Latin name, was a translation by the Romans. Yeshua, his real name. So again, he is so special to all of us. But do we recognize him on the Holy Eucharist, do we? That's a question. Do we recognize Jesus, Yeshua, in the Holy Eucharist? Do we? Do we receive Christ on the Holy Eucharist? Although we are not even worthy to receive him, and we still receive him because he loves us so much. And he wants us to receive him. He wants us to be with him because he's with us always. Can we recognize Christ on the most Painful time on our life and then being grat grateful for it. When we receive the Holy Eucharist, can we talk to him as we talk to anyone in need? Can we look at Christ and thank him for everything? Do we respect Christ on the Holy Tabernacle, do we? Have full reverence in this church to the Holy Tabernacle, do we? Or we come like a living room here, huh? We socialize, we talk, we jump, we dance, we chit-chat. With Christ present on the Holy Eucharist in the tabernacle. Do we really walk, walk in this church, in the house of God? Church, of course, you make the church. But also, a God is in it. God is in this building. And he's watching every single one of you. He's watching every single one of you. So, again, how you see Jesus in your life. Amen.